So uh, we'll uh, shift gears now and have uh, Megan Greeley. Dr. Greeley is our uh, fellow uh, with our service. Uh, Kohei, maybe you can come up to the uh, podium and uh, David and Sala. Uh, did Dan quite come back? No. Okay. So we'll just uh, discuss this case of local advanced gastric cancer. Dr. Thank you, and thank you for the invitation to speak today. Um, so two cases for discussion around locally advanced gastric cancer. The first is that of a 74-year-old female um, who presented earlier this year with early satiety, epigastric pain, and weight loss. She had a CT at an outside institution that demonstrated gastric wall thickening um, associated with enlarged gastrohepatic lymph nodes measuring up to 2.8 by 2 centimeters. Uh, a subsequent PET scan also demonstrated FDG avidity in both the primary tumor and the gastropathic node. She then established care at MSK and underwent an EGD and diagnostic laparoscopy, which demonstrated a 10 centimeter malignant appearing tumor at the incisora. There was no evidence of peritoneal carcinomatosis and three cytological washings were negative. So the biopsies demonstrated invasive, moderately differentiated adenocarcinoma. They were of intestinal subtype um, H. pylori was negative, and HER2 was also negative by both immunohistochemistry and FISH. So given her age and performance status, um, she was treated with perioperative dose-adjusted Folfox. After two cycles, her PET-CT demonstrated a response to treatment um, with the both a decrease in the size of the gastropathic lymph node and also a decrease in SUV from 14.5 um, to 4.8, representing a 67% decrease in the avidity of the node. There was also a small decrease in the avidity of the primary tumor from 8.8 .8 to 7.9. So um, given this, she proceeded to further three cycles of Folfox for a total of five cycles, and a, rep a repeat PET-CT at that point demonstrated an increase in the size and avidity of gastropathic lymph node um, from 4.5 up to 9.5. The extent of avidity in the primary slightly increased, but the SUV essentially was stable. So in light of this, um, she proceeded to subtotal distal gastrectomy and a Roux and Y reconstruction. The pathology demonstrated a poorly differentiated gastric um, adenocarcinoma of the antrum, mixed um, Lawrence type, Margins were negative. One of 18 nodes was involved um, with metastatic disease for a stage of YPT1B and 1. HER2 and DBV were negative, and the PDL1 um, combined positive score was 20. Of note, the treatment effect was less than 2%. So at this point, um, we wanted to ask what treatment would you consider? A, Falfox, B, chemoradiation, C, single agent fluoropyrimidine, or D, surveillance? So this patient seemed to be not associated with a response with a four folks at the final CD sc PET scan and their pathological findings. So for me, in Japan, we can use S1 plus dostaxel based on the previously mentioned trial. So maybe I would like to use the S1 plus dostaxel for this patient from the pathological result. Okay, Megan, what happened next? So the patient also went on to have um, immunohistochemical chemical testing for um, MMR proteins and was found to be MLH1 and PMS2 deficient, um, consistent with MMR deficiency. Um, in light of this, we actually recommended the patient to undergo surveillance. This is based on two recent studies, um, which were both um, post hoc exploratory analysis. The first was um, published in JAM Oncology last year by Smith et al. Um, it was an exploratory analysis from the MAGIC study where 303 patients had available tissue for MSI um, testing, and of those, 6.6% were MSI high. Um, with, when their outcomes were evaluated, patients who um, received surgery alone had, um, had excellent outcomes compared to patients who received chemotherapy and surgery um, where the hazard ratio was 2.2. Um, the curves in the middle represent those patients who are MSS and either received surgery plus chemotherapy in the top or surgery alone um, on the bottom blue line. Then um, earlier this year, the classic study, um, a postdoc analysis of this was published um, in Annals of Surgery in May. Um, and it, similarly, they looked at um, patients who had tissue available for MSI testing. Of the 592 patients, 6.8% were MSI high. And 
Again, their outcomes um, were evaluated. So the patients who were MSI high had a five-year disease-free survival of 84.8% versus 60.7% in those who were MSS. Um, and then looking at outcomes by chemotherapy, in the patients who um, were MSI high, they did not appear to benefit, benefit from adjuvant chemotherapy, while um, as expected, the patients who were MSS um, did have a significant benefit from adjuvant chemotherapy. Do you want to get to the next one? So the next case then, just to highlight this further, is 65-year-old male who presented with nonspecific abdominal pain and anemia. Um, he had both C CT and PET imaging that demonstrated minimal thickening at the lesser curvature, um, enlarged gastropathic lymph nodes, um, measuring up to 1.7 centimeters and no evidence of distant metastatic disease. He had an EGD that showed an ulcerated um, lesion proximal to the incisora that, um, with poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma on pathology. H. pylori was positive, and he was hurt to an EBV negative. Um, at diagnostic laparoscopy, he had a clinical T4A tumor with nodes visible along the lesser curvature. Again, no evidence of peritoneal carcinomatosis, and cytological washings were negative. So he proceeded um, directly so to a subtotal distal gastrectomy and ruin Y reconstruction, and his pathology demonstrated moderately to poorly differentiated um, adenocarcinoma of the gastric antrum with medullary features of intestinal type. One of 17 nodes was involved um, for a stage of PT3 and 1. Um, HER2 was negative, and um, again, we've, um, this patient was identified to have um, loss of, MSH, of PM, PMS2 and MLH1 consistent with MMR deficiency. So, Dan, I'm glad you came back because yeah, this sorry. is uh, <laughs> our, actually yeah. our yeah. patient, yeah. and we. Uh, just to kind of flip on uh, this a little bit, we knew uh, he was MSI, the patient, uh, the tumor right. was MSI uh, in the perioperative setting, so before you uh, right. uh, took him to a gastrectomy. Can you just uh, talk about your perspective as a surgeon and, and, and sort of the approach to these patients, and then maybe we can have Sala and David give their perspective as well. Yeah, I mean, I think that, uh, as you said, there's increasing evidence these patients either don't benefit or may even be hurt by uh, chemotherapy, by conventional chemotherapy. And so I don't think we have any, it doesn't affect the surgical approach. I mean, I think the chemotherapy is really for the long-term outcome. Um, the, the challenge, of course, is that if you think he needs chemotherapy, there's only a 50% chance he's ever gonna see it in the post-operative setting. Uh, and that's, a, that's always a challenge for us. So, um, but I think this was the right, obviously the right decision in this particular setting. And then this, if, you, if I recall, it was a distal tumor? Yeah. Right, yeah. so uh, for patients with distal tumors, generally adjuvant chemotherapy is easier. I think they're, they're less likely to have uh, total, complications, right. but I don't actually know that we know that from the post-operative adjuvant studies of either perioperative therapy or post-op therapy is of the patients who are eligible, does the operation that they had impact the likelihood that they will have a, I mean, it so happens this patient had a complication, a significant complication, which, um, you know, he, he'd be, he'll be eligible for chemo within a 12-week window, but not by much. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, but, uh, so I don't know that we know the answer to that specific question of whether we're, whether patients have a distal gastrectomy are more likely to get post-op chemo than a patient with total gastrectomy. Yeah. Sala, what are your thoughts? I mean, it's... Um it's very difficult. I mean, if patients have complications, I, uh, se serious complications, I don't continue the post-operative treatment because this is too risky, uh, especially if this is something which has to do with leaks or whatever. So leaks uh, can be uh, uh, turned into chronic leaks with chemo and then make problems. But in terms of the MSI, uh, uh, MSI, I think that uh, the first patient had a small stage, so I would agree that we don't need post-operative treatment. This patient has T3 and plus, so uh, we know from we know more about MSI from colon cancer. Normally, MSI high do not involve the lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. Uh, but as, as soon as it involves the lymph nodes, so these cells are different from those do, who do not, uh, which do not <laughs> That's involve interesting. We nodes. need to do an MSI. So what, what I just well, want to had that yeah, what, I, yeah. what I just want to say, I, I, I don't share that the feeling that this patient has a fantastic prognosis and, 
Uh, I mean, the data we have are very small groups. Um, if I would say if the patient had no complications, responded pre-op clinically by PET scan or by gastro, and you said there's a response, and feels feels good, I would uh, administer the post. But he got, this one got no pre-op. But this is, yeah. yeah, this got no, ah, okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so. Right, as so, soon as yeah, he yeah. heard his MMA, you know, so I'm sorry. Sorry. I he, he I ran for the hills, I, he did I, not want I to. I wouldn't go for, for post-op, because uh, I, I doubt, anyway, sorry I'm different, but I don't believe in the post adjuvant chemo in gastric cancer in Western countries. That I actually statement. disagree. <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> yeah, I disagree. I, I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I fought this battle on the NCCN committee. Uh, who, they just did not want to accept the treatment that is given to 90% of the world's gastric cancers, which is surgery followed by adjuvant chemotherapy, yeah. which is pretty convincingly demonstrated to show a survival benefit yeah. in thousands of patients. So, so uh, I think if this patient were mismatch repair uh, intact, uh, a standard of care in the United States after adequate surgery would be adjuvant chemotherapy, Folfox or Kpox, I think would be appropriate. I, I don't buy into the biology is different and, you know, S1 is a magical pill. I mean, we know that, uh, you know, capecitabine and oxaliplatin is effective as adjuvant th treatment. Uh, I think the hooker here is, we have small data sets suggesting that MSI high um, uh, patients have a better prognosis even without chemotherapy. Uh, so I think uh, we have data that it may be deleterious, but that was a very small data set uh, or neutral effect. Uh, I think this is a patient I would think about observing, um, uh, but I disagree with Salah. I think that uh, if you have good D2 resection, Upfront, uh, node positive patients should get adjuvant chemotherapy. That's what the vast majority of gastric cancer patients get globally. So. I mean. Go ahead, what are your thoughts? <laughs> We're closing. Yeah. So, as you know, Asian uh, strategy for localized gastric cancer is still uh, gastrectomy first, followed by adjuvant chemo. But uh, if patient had a large size of lymph node or a multiple lymph node, a uh, surgeon welcome about the neo adjuvant chemotherapy. So if patient require chemotherapy, I may check MSI status because patient have a chance to be enrolled for trial or to use a PD-1 blocker. But <clears throat> without this factor, maybe surgery first is the best option right. in Japanese. And after that, I do not check usually MSI status. And I, uh, there are several uh, controversial uh, results in the uh, German oncology result by magic is very different, large difference. I, I do not believe there are this kind of difference because crash showed are almost a similar, right. similar survival curve. And if we focus on very high stage, uh, still the benefit seem to be observed with the oxaliplatin based regimen. Also, our Japanese standard became the S1 plus those stack, so after our uh, uh, trial, and we do not have uh, any data about the MSI status. In our institution, we previously evaluated the MSI status in 500 gastric cancer who uh, received the surgery alone, and we do not observe any difference in prognosis in our institution. So maybe clearly we need more data for MSI status in perioperative settings. So at this time, I do not change my practice by MSI. So you would recommend in a fit patient, S1 dose taxol if, yeah. if the patient was in Japan. Very good. Until we have the more data. And no radiation. <laughs> All right. <laughs> good. That's, that's great. Thank you.